Hello YouTube. I've got these old hard disks here and a beer and I'm just wondering if these things are still worth using. So they're all identical. I've collected these over various methods. You find them in a lot of old PCs. Very common hard disk. Um, when I bought my R710 or R410 server that you can actually hear right now, it came with a couple of these. They're 7200 RPM, 160 gig SATA hard disks. Um, and they're not really anything super duper fancy. They're either SATA 1.5 or 3 gigabits a second, either way. They're just old, there's really no use for them anymore. Um, and you would never really dream of putting one of these by itself in a new machine. So what I'm thinking about is, you know, one of them is kind of useless, but if you combine all four of them together into a RAID array, is it worth doing that to get more performance out? You know, can you actually get an array that's fast and usable and obviously larger in size, or is it generally just worth it to suck it up and spend 40 bucks on a new hard drive? So, I've got my old 2009 gaming PC. I'm going to toss these guys in, configure some RAID arrays, and see how well they perform. Say hi to my new cat. Anyway, i got these disks all uh, plugged in here, all four of them, in this PC. I'm going to go ahead and power it up and enter the RAID configuration mode. Um, I've already set it up so that SATA is in RAID mode, not AHCI, so I can put these things into an array. So if I sit down here, you're going to hit Control i right there. I've got four non-RAID disks. I'm going to go ahead and build one. I'm going to call it RAID, oops, RAID 10. It doesn't matter what I call it. Uh, I'm going to do a RAID... 10, which gives me one option, or RAID 0 plus 1, which is, I guess, a RAID 0 of RAID 1s, if I'm correct. Um, 64 kilobyte strip size. This might make a difference in performance for small, whoop, small reads and writes. Um, but let's just put, leave it at 64, I guess. Okay. 298 gigs is what we're going to get out of that, so let's hit yes. And there you have it. You have a volume that is a RAID 10 that is 298 gigs. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out and see how it performs. So I've actually got a 128 gig SSD here um, that I had spare. I'm loading Windows 10 on this SSD. So I'm going to go ahead and boot Windows 10 off that SSD. It's actually super fast. Kind of cool. This hardware is all like from 2000 to 2009. It's going super speedy. I'm going to go ahead and open up Crystal Disk Mark, which is a great little tool for measuring the speed of disks. I actually need to restart that because I opened it up before I created Disk D. Okay. Disk D. I'm going to do a test of everything, which includes like sequential and random reads and writes. So just as a basis of comparison, here is the benchmark from the SSD. Now this SSD is from 2014. It's 128 gig. You could probably find something similar. Yes, I know. You could probably find something similar for like 30 bucks on Newegg, maybe 40 or 50, but anyway. Um, I thought it was faster than this, but regardless, it's still pretty fast. And what we, what we can really take away from this is the fact that, yeah, the sequential reads and writes are pretty good, but the the randoms aren't that far behind, especially the top one there, so the second the second row down from the top. Um, they're not lagging that far behind. So SSDs are really great in the random read and write space, uh, but what we're going to see is that the hard drives are going to be maybe half the speed in sequential, but nowhere near half in random reads and writes. So we'll see how much the RAID array um, being configured can assist in that space. Here's the results from each of these hard drives individually. Now, they're all plugged in, but they're not in a RAID array, so they're each treated as an individual drive. And of course, I'm booting off this SSD here as um, the boot disk for Windows. So if you actually go in Windows Explorer here, you can basically see, if you go in Windows Explorer here, there we go. This is taking forever. Uh, you will see disk C, which is the SSD, and then the four hard drives all just separately on the side. So, the read and write in these guys is a little bit scattered. This one's kind of an outlier, but for the most part we're looking at about 80 megabytes a second for continuous read and writes, or sequential I should say. But the random reads and writes, so the bottom three rows of each test, is not looking quite as hot. Um, SSDs really shine in that space anyway, but even with a hard disk, you would expect to see a little bit better performance than this. So I'm willing to bet you in an RAID array, the sequential reads and writes will, in will increase by a good amount, but we'll see how much we can get those, um, see, uh, those, those random reads and writes up, because that's what's really going to make an operating system slow if you're trying to run a computer off it. And in general, these uh, sequential reads and writes are maybe, I don't know, 
half or a quarter as fast as the SSD, but the the randoms are you know what one twenty fifth or one fortieth as fast. So that really shows a sharp contrast right there. So here's the results of the RAID 10. Um, obviously this is a lot better than each of the drives by themselves, but it's still not super great on the bottom three rows, which I'll explain in a second. So we're looking at almost twice the speed on average for these sequential reads and writes, which is pretty good, but the, 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 um, the random reads and writes are, you know, maybe twice as fast on average as the standalone drives, but it's not really uh, a huge increase and they're still not looking super great. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the reason for that is because you have these four discs, right? But RAID works in stripes. I think right now I'm using 64 kilobyte stripes. You kind of have 64 kilobytes of data you know, on one disc and 64 kilobytes on the other one, 64 on one and 64 on the other. So when you read only a very small amount of data, like four kilobytes, chances are it's only coming off of one disc at a time. And this is a RAID 10, so it's a little bit more complicated, but if you had like a RAID 0 of two hard drives, four kilobytes of data, chances are it's only coming off of one disc or the other, not both at the same time. So that's why uh, you're not going to see kick-ass random read performance with little tiny bits of data on a RAID array necessarily, which will definitely keep it to us a little bit slower. But anyway, time to move on to RAID 5. Here's the results of the RAID 5. What's really interesting is that the sequential read is so much faster than the RAID 10. Not sure why, honestly. It could depend on a lot of factors like drivers, how they're written, uh, or something like that, but what we're seeing is that the random reads and writes aren't so great. I mean, the random the random reads aren't super bad, but the random writes are pretty not great. That could be because you know it needs to calculate parity data because it is a RAID 5 after all, and uh, maybe the controller is not super great. But all in all, not a huge performance on the um, random write side of things. But overall. Pretty good sequential read and write, but again, those random writes are just kind of dragging down a little bit. So now, time to go on to the RAID 0, which should be pretty interesting. So I pulled the SSD out. Now we're just working out the RAID 0. I imaged it over using Macri and Reflect on this USB, which is pretty handy. And uh, we're just going to see how, quick, how quickly Windows can boot now. Okay, so that was fairly slow and still taking a while for the menu to come up here. Of course, when you do this to yourself, the speeds will vary immensely. You know, it just depends on the disk. I could just have one wonky disk that's slowing the, the entire array down. But in general, I think this is fairly representative. Okay, so there you have it. That was probably about a solid minute to boot. Which isn't the greatest in the world. I'm just going to see how how quickly we can load things up here without really doing an official test because I already did that of course so okay that took a little while not nearly as fast as an SSD probably not as slow as one of these drives by themselves but still not super duper awesome uh, the system does seem a little bit sluggish not horrible but again we're working up for RAID 0 this is the best case performance scenario this is if you do not care about getting up one morning and having your entire operating system be bricked because your array failed. Yeah, I mean, it's not that slow. I'm really not going to do any more testing than that, though, because we already took the benchmarks, and I think clicking around kind of gives you the general idea. Here's all the results. What I forgot to mention is that, of course, when you're using different arrays, you get a lot more usable capacity depending which one you're doing. RAID 0 gives me like almost 600 gigs, you know, RAID 10 gave me, you know, not even 300, but 290 something, so that's one thing to consider. But to start off, you know, our SSD was pretty fast. Um, the RAID 0 was actually faster than the SSD, sequential, but if you compare the random reads and writes, it's not nearly as fast. Part of that's just because, you know, an SSD is an SSD, and by design, it's random reads and writes are going to be way faster. I think part of it's also because the RAID array is not going to increase the performance of those bottom three by that much, just simply because of the striping concept, but I could be wrong about that. Um, and, you know, again, here's all the drives by themselves, just kind of for comparison. So, you saw quite a bit of increase in performance across the board, but still, those random reads and writes aren't super duper duper awesome, even if they, you know, increase by a factor of two or three. That's the RAID 10. That's the RAID 5 and the RAID 0. So overall, I think this is 
pretty decent when you're doing raid zero, especially in the sequential realm. Um, but I really wouldn't recommend using this method of just raiding a bunch of old hard disks for actually loading an OS off because it's not super fast. But hey, you know if you if you want to drive D just to store data on, um, probably using a raid five might be your best bet. Raid zero if you really don't care about that data for some reason. But again, sequentials are pretty great with even these old disks if you're you know working with uh, files that are gigabytes, maybe even terabytes if you have big enough disks in size. Yeah, go ahead and do this. Otherwise, for running an operating system, it's not the awesomest thing in the world. But you know, it really works if you're if you're really looking to not spend any money on a new drive like an SSD or an HDD, and you want to make use of all your old disks. So these results are kind of up to interpretation. Take them as you will. But hopefully the video was fairly informative, and thank you for watching.